I think Sappho is a little sick. <laughs> Good morning, welcome to Lost for Words, where we explore great women poets. I'm Sarah Woods. Today we are spending some time with this wonderful lyric Greek poetess from the Isle of Lesbos, Sappho. She is one of our first female poets um, from antiquity and Today, we're exploring a poem of hers that it's one of her longer, more complete poems that we have of hers. And if you're somebody who likes falling in love and you're somebody who likes that like rush and high of like what happens in your body when you fall in love with someone, this poem is for you, my friend. <laughs> Um, but I do have to say, personally, when I read this poem, um, the more I've been reading it, it actually makes me a little bit nauseous. <laughs> it doesn't, um, it actually reminds me more of being sick than it does, um, sorry, I'm like outside, and I'm like, I have hair in my mouth. Okay. Because it's a little bit windy. Um, but it actually reminds me more of being sick than it does in love. But you have to tell me what you think after we read it. Let's go ahead and read it. He is more than a hero. He is a god in my eyes. The man who is allowed to sit beside you. He who listens intimately to the sweet murmur of your voice. The enticing laughter that makes my own heart beat fast. If I meet you suddenly, I can't speak my tongue is broken. A thin flame runs under my skin, seeing nothing, hearing only my own ears drumming. I drip with sweat. Trembling shakes my body, and I turn paler than dry grass. At such times, death isn't far from me. There, here we have another pipe. I've got a really noisy bird out here. I have these mockingbirds that are always fighting in my yard. They're, they have the, it's funny, they have a beautiful song, but when they're fighting, they sound really annoying. <laughs> um, but anyways, so in this poem, we have Sappho exploring the theme of love again. And we already, I already have another video where we explored two of her shorter fragments where she explored love and she explored them in relation to a, like a whirlwind and a snake bite. So she, I'm starting to notice this pattern of Sappho comparing love to things that are like, you know, destructive, like a tornado that kill you like snake venom. And then here, the farther we go into this poem, the closer we get to death. Um, the, the, the more you read this poem, the sicker you get and the closer you get to feeling like you're dying. And so I'm starting to think that maybe Sappho has a very, um, like her experiences of love are very interesting to me. They're very human. I'm pretty sure this is something that a lot of people can probably relate to, but let's just, let's go ahead and explore this. So she starts off this poem and she sort of points your eyes in a direction. It says, he is more than a hero. He is a god in my eyes. So you step into this poem and she immediately directs your gaze at this he in the poem. And she's like, he is more than a god. He is more than a hero. And so you're like, ooh, like who is like who is this guy? He must be, you know, really amazing. <laughs> and then she says, then she takes us somewhere new suddenly. She says, the man who is allowed to sit beside you. He who listens intimately to the sweet murmur of your voice, the enticing laughter that makes my own heart beat fast. So here we have Sappho leading us down this path 
in this poem and we think we're sort of about to go into this love poem that's towards this like hero this godlike man and we're looking at him and then all of a sudden she says um the man who is allowed to sit beside you so all of a sudden we're not looking at the man we're looking at the person sitting beside the man and a lot of people from what i could tell when i was researching this a lot of people believe that this person that is sitting beside this man is a woman so um who is this woman we don't know um but here we have she does this sort of like bait and switch with this poem which is really fun i kind of like it um because it's it feels like a predictable love poem it feels like you're going in a certain direction and then she's like no nah, just kidding i'm looking at this person over here <laughs> which is great um and she starts to go down this path of describing what this person sitting beside this god-like man this hero-like man and what this person um what this person does for her and she starts saying about this person um this man he gets to listen to your to the sweet murmur of your voice the enticing laughter that makes my own heart beat fast so we're starting to get like this little glimpse of what this person does to sappho and um like you can feel like this person's like voice and their laughter like just like or like is something that starts to make her heart beat faster and it's like this domino effect like the person speaks they laugh doo -doo 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 -doo, the dominoes fall <laughs> and here we have Sappho's heart beating faster and then um, it says if I meet you suddenly, I can't speak. This, to me, sort of has the same feeling as the other poem that we looked at last time with the whirlwind suddenly coming upon an oak tree and shaking it. And that's what love is like to Sappho. Or a snake biting someone and that venom spreading through their body. It's like this sudden thing that happens to her that it seems like she doesn't have much control over. And you can feel that again in this poem. It says, if I meet you suddenly, I can't speak. My tongue is broken. A thin flame runs under my skin. I see nothing. So this starts to feel like um, it's building momentum. It's almost like an avalanche sort of feeling. Um, you can feel her happening upon this person suddenly and then she can't speak and then her tongue is broken and then a thin flame runs under her skin like can you feel these feelings like I don't know if you've ever um, had feelings like where you have fallen in love with someone or become infatuated with someone um, to me this feels a little more like infatuation than it does love but maybe the two mixed I don't know but it's still that feeling like it's still a feeling that she really doesn't have much control over and all it takes is being around this person and she's completely it looks like this feeling completely takes over her body she can't speak her tongue's broken she's got a, a flame running under her skin and now she can't see anything like so you imagine her almost like you can almost imagine a person like when they get ready um like if they're having like a heat stroke or they're like <laughs> about to pass out from like bad blood sugar or something um that feeling like have you ever gotten that before like where you get like really hot you get pale and then your eyes go black and you're like all right i'm about to pass out like to me that's what this poem reminds me of so now she can see nothing and then she says hearing only my own ears drumming so now she can't see she's got fire running through her skin <laughs> the more i read this the funnier it is i'm like this sounds awful um her tongue can't speak she can't hear all she can hear is her own like drumming in her ears and now she's dripping with sweat 
I drip with sweat, trembling shakes my body. So here she is, that oak tree with the whirlwind <laughs> shaking her heart. She said her body is shaking and she turns paler than dry grass. At such times, death isn't far from me. I think she did a fantastic job of exploring that feeling that does happen when um, like your heart has fallen for someone or is infatuated with someone or has like, like when your heart has run away from you um, in the presence of another person. I don't know. To me, the way she describes this feeling, it for me now, it rem it, it is not something that I'm like, ooh, I want to feel that. <laughs> I'm like, that sounds terrible. But maybe it's because there's some part of me, I'm like, oh, maybe I'm a control freak. Maybe I just don't want to... Um, I don't like the idea of like all those things coming over my body and then not being in control of myself. <laughs> like if that's what it reminds me of, it reminds me of something happening to you that you're not in control of at all. Um, and it reminds me of being sick. Um, and she says it at the very end, at such times death isn't far from me. Um, but I love the idea that there is something that can happen that a person can have this kind of effect on another person and that it's something that can happen suddenly and it's something that this person has almost no control over um there's something about it that reminds me of an a, like addiction too like i'm not not that i know much about this but like I'm trying to think of something like, like I love sugar or chocolate <laughs> and I just imagining how like sometimes you start to crave like sugar, like there's something about the way this feels that kind of reminds me of a craving could come over a person for something that they're addicted to. I don't know. Does it remind, can you guys see that in this at all? Um, anyway, that's all I'm going to say about it, but I'd be very curious what you guys think of this. I think the main question I leave when that I'm left with when I'm done with Sappho's poems about love is is this love like is what she just described love I mean she didn't say it's love but you kind of think of it like a love poem um yeah so I guess I'm curious what you think of this poem when you finish this poem does this feel like love to you? Does this feel like infatuation? Does it feel like the beginning of a long successful relationship with another person? <laughs> um, does it sound like something that happens to someone once and this is the only person they're ever going to fall in love with? Is this destiny? Is this, or is this sound like something that happens to someone? Like, could you see this happening? Like this kind of thing. If this person experiences this kind of thing, do you think this person experiences this often with like different people? Um, it makes me think of that other poem we did where Sappho prayed to Aphrodite. What ailed me now that made me call you again? So there's another poem where she prays to Aphrodite and Aphrodite's like you know what has made you call me again and so it's kind of like but it was like Sappho um, petitioning Aphrodite about love and so it makes you wonder if the or it makes me wonder if this kind of thing is something that happened to Sappho a lot <laughs> poor Sappho uh, that would suck yeah, I'm thinking I'm like this would be awful if you were just like if this was, if this was how love happened to all of us and it could just happen at any time, I feel like that would be really, aw I mean, this is, to me, this actually feels quite awful. Like if this is love and it's just like, you can be walking around and then all of a sudden this random person is making you like physically sick 
like they're affecting your whole body like this if they're like a whirlwind like shaking your heart like an oak tree if they're like a snake bite um i feel like the world would feel like a dangerous place to exist <laughs> if, if walking around these kind of things could just happen to you all of a sudden um i don't know and i'm connecting this back to some of her other poetry yeah i'm starting to notice a pattern with sappho but anyways we're gonna stop there i'm not gonna keep going hope you have a great week and I guess I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.